Hey guys, welcome back to Adapt Adventures. On this week's episode, Andrea and I will be discussing our first home purchase together, the kind of the process we went through, what we were looking for, and then how we've adapted the house to make it work for uh, myself and some of the needs that I have. So as you may have seen previously, we've uploaded a video uh, that was our first apartment tour and how we made it wheelchair accessible for Casey. So in case you've missed that and you're curious about uh, where we used to live before living in this house, we're going to put a link right above here so that you can uh, check that out. So before we get into the specifics of this home and um, how we've made it work and what the rooms and stuff are like, we just want to give you a little bit of a background of kind of how the process went um, going and searching for the home and what we were looking for and kind of um, what our necessities were uh, in, that, in that journey, so to speak. Um, Andrea and I started looking for our house in 2019. Mm -hmm. So kind of the main things we were looking for was main level living. Um, we didn't need anything that was like super specific, like completely accessible, but we did want main level living. I needed something that was uh, had big enough doors that I could get through. So not necessarily 36 inches, which is ADA compliant, but something big enough where like kind of our range was about 30 inches. My chair is about 27. So having a little bit of extra space, uh, you know, 29 or 30 inches was about, you know, our minimum because after that it gets tight. Mm -hmm. um, and then mainly just kind of as we were, is something you get a feel for when you come into the house is space is big enough that I can move around and that I'm not getting jammed up in hallways uh, that, you know, if we kind of can imagine if there's not furniture in the home, if we put it in, that I'd still be able to move around and things like that. Uh, no stairs for the entry. We wanted something that was either going to be like on slab or, you know, very minimal, th minimal thresholds. So we wasn't going to have to go upstairs to get into the home or have to build a big um, ramp or something like that. Um, and then again, like I mentioned, we wanted we wanted these things but not having to do a huge remodel. Mm -hmm. uh, and so unfortunately sometimes that put us into the same category as a lot of, at least kind of what our realtor had it described to us is that uh, there were a lot of baby boomers that were downsizing at the time mm -hmm. and they were looking to get into similar things as as they age that they don't have, want to have stairs and wanted to have the main level living. So that was kind of a challenge at, with the market at the time um, was we were compete being first time home buyers, mm -hmm. we were competing with boomers who were downsizing with, so a lot of cash offers and things like that that we had to compete against. Mm -hmm. um, so we were definitely looking for a townhome with some sort of HOA, so some of that's kind of lawn care, plowing, that kind of stuff was taken care of, so we didn't necessarily have to do that. So we accounted for all of that, you know, in the purchase of the home and within our budget to mm -hmm. give you an idea of like how we went about decision making. So we got the winner. We yeah. are really happy with it. Um, we hope you enjoy the tour that, you know, uh, we're going to show you. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go through a list of like room by room or house section so you have an idea of like how we've adapted, if anything. So first we'll start with our garage. Uh, we have a two car garage, kind of. It, it's listed as two cars mm -hmm. and it does fit, but it's not huge. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for that reason, um, in order for it to make it work for me to be able to get in and out of my car, <clears throat> or I mean, we, we have two vehicles that I can drive now. Um, so to make it work for me to be able to get in and out of either vehicle, um, how we make it work is Andrea, she parks her uh, vehicle in nose first mm -hmm. and then I back my vehicle in but like back end or back mm -hmm. back first uh, and what that does is so that means with if her nose is in first and mine is facing the other direction uh the driver's side doors when they open are opposite each other so i can open we have enough space that in the center between the two vehicles mm -hmm. we can swing a door all the way open um, and that allows me to be able to transfer put my chair in and out of either vehicle that i'm trying to get into mm -hmm. um now granted we can't move both vehicles at the same time but like that's really not an issue and then also so we talked about not having um steps into the home uh from outside but uh the from in the garage and on our front door um there is a threshold mm -hmm. um to get in so initially what we did is uh, my dad helped me buy or not buy but build some plywood ramps or a plywood ramp that the threshold was probably when we first got here a good I want to say five inches, mm -hmm. four or five inches. So we built a threshold ramp uh, that allowed me to kind of move up that one. Um, and then later on, what we did is we have a friend who's a, a contractor. and He came in and looked at it. And actually, he was able to cut most of that threshold out uh, so that going from the garage 
into the laundry slash mud room it's actually only about an inch now so i still have a small threshold ramp but it's not the big five inches that we used to have uh, because that original like threshold plate that they had in there for the door was pretty thick but mm-hmm. it wasn't necessary so that was something we were able to do later on after we were in the house for about a year uh, and that really helped that i because like even with that threshold ramp it was still hard especially if i had like groceries or if i was carrying a bag Mm -hmm. for me to pull myself into the into the up the ramp into the um the laundry room Mm -hmm. so now that we have that much much lower it's a lot a lot easier transition for me to get in and out Mm -hmm. so we've had to be patient with some of the things we've wanted to modify in the house and there's definitely things here that we still haven't gotten to but and we can talk about kind of our, our wish list mm-hmm. here at the end and um, well we're in the garage though still mm-hmm. um as you may have seen a lot of this channel we show you a lot of gadgets wheelchair equipment uh we definitely still own a lot of that and with that also comes needing space for storage but casey and i uh, got very creative with different things we can you can buy at the hardware store so that we can hang you know his hand cycle next to my bike and buy a nice rack and find the corner where we can still have those up and available but still be able to park a car we found a nice uh balance that there's a whole corner that's for the hand bike and uh for casey's beach wheels uh that we have a whole box with spare tubes and tires and we casey even has uh, an extra frame and then just there's just different ways how we've been able to figure out to make the most out of that small corner and space. And we know which corner of the garage, which boxes we've labeled that are for wheelchair equipment, wheelchair maintenance, so that he can access those when I'm not here or I can go easily find them. So when you come in through the garage, you come into the laundry room. The washer and dryer that came with the house was I think probably original. So they were like <laughs> 20 years old and they were top load both of them i think so yeah well, i know the dryer was front load but the, the washer was yes. top load and mm-hmm. that was always hard for me to get my arms into and and reach down into that drum because it was big um so eventually we saved up and we were able to purchase um front load washer and dryers so that's you know those are the kind of things that you don't necessarily think about as being like oh i made this because or i bought this or i used this because it's adapted or it's ada or whatever but it makes life easier like um we did that because now i can much more easily reach in to grab laundry and put it in the washer or put it in the dryer and vice versa Mm -hmm. um so those are kind of the some of the things that you we we thought about um that it was you know tonight it was time to get a new washer and dryer anyways um and you might not think about it as like an accessible thing but it makes but it is life in a chair easier when you do those Mm -hmm. those types of things so after um you come in. They come into the laundry room. There's the kitchen's kind of right in front of you, which we'll talk about in a minute. But if you take a, if you go right down our hallway, we have our, um, our second bedroom or the guest bedroom in the front of the home. Uh, originally, it was set up as our home office, uh, and that worked great. We bought um, IKEA, mm-hmm. like IKEA tables that were tall enough that I could roll underneath and use, so I could work from my chair if I wanted to. Or we had desk chairs in there at, at mm-hmm. one time too, so I would transfer back and forth depending on um comfortability and what i was doing so um right now though it's currently set up like full time as a as a guest be- or as a bedroom bedroom mm-hmm. uh as we have some family staying with us right now and yeah. then mm-hmm. we have a, a decently long hallway but like again it was something where we looked at it and it's wide enough where i don't it's not one of the i've been i've like i remember there was one time when andrea and i were searching for apartments when we first got married and we went into this place and this this lady who was showing us this place she's like it seems like he's moving around quite a bit or quite well and i'm like in this hallway where i can barely get my shoulders down and like there's no way i'm turning around in this hallway and so like if we would have ever stayed there anytime i went down the hallway it would have been a one-way thing where i would have pushed down and had to like reverse back out but all the all the hallways in this place i can turn all the way around like make a 360 and those were kind of Coming back to like what we talked about when we were looking for homes and going through that, those were the kind of things I would do when I would come into a house. It'd be like, can I go into this room and make a 360? Or if you know, if there would be a bedroom, a bed here, and sometimes there was furniture in them, sometimes there wasn't. But I would, those are the kinds of things we would test. Is like, all right, if you use this bathroom, can you turn around in it? Can you get the door closed behind you? Um, mm-hmm. And just looking at those types of things as bare minimum stuff Mm -hmm. before you even start getting into the other kind of stuff that kind of brings us to our to our kitchen so the kitchen is not 
really mo- we haven't modified anything in the kitchen at all. Um, the setup just honestly worked, worked, and it's we were sold when we saw the open space like you're yeah. seeing in some of the videos right now, because it's a uh, kitchen, dining room, and living room yeah, all so, in the same open space. Yeah, all in open space, and and one thing that we have we were able to compare with others sometimes places that we were looking at is some of these kitchens are so small if they're like a, a u-shaped uh, not peninsula a u-shaped kitchen mm-hmm. where you can just basically go in or they call them galley kitchens sometimes where there's only one one way and they have a peninsula instead of an island that was really difficult for me because if andre wanted to get to the fridge but the fridge is past me and i'm cooking at the stove there wasn't enough space for us to do it mm-hmm. um and, and so you might remember some of the old videos when we talked when we used to blog a little more casey is the main one that cooks so it really mattered for us that we found the kitchen with the specs that he's talking about mm-hmm. because and the maneuverability for me mm-hmm. just because it makes it easier so with this kitchen we have a, an island in the middle and an access point to the kitchen on either side of the island so like if i'm cooking at the stove which is dr- directly behind the island andre can still get to the fridge or mm-hmm. get to the sink without having to like fight past me to get past me by the stove Mm -hmm. um and it's not the biggest space in the world uh but like i can almost i can probably do a 360 between the space between the island and the countertop or where the stove is Mm -hmm. definitely on the ends like Mm -hmm. where the kit where the dishwasher and where our pantry is i can make Mm -hmm. full circles there it might be a little tight between the stove but like how often am I doing that? It's not right, that not a necessity. Often. And I think what's really helped with the kitchen setup is the island is super wide, and mm-hmm. so not only is it wide and the space on top, but the bottom has served us for storage. So right next to the kitchen, like we mentioned, and it's very obvious on the videos, is the um, living room and dining room area. We mm-hmm. admittedly really like and have enjoyed this space a lot. Casey and I like to host family and friends and he likes to cook and things like that and the table you see us sitting on is the same table we had back at our apartment love this table it extends to have two leaves put in where we can sit about 10 12 people almost if we expand it yeah if you go down to uh right now my right Mm -hmm. is where you would see that next hallway that casey was talking about the carpeted one so and along with the guest bathroom. Yeah. And so our guest bathroom was less of a concern for us because... Um, Accessibility-wise. Yeah, accessibility-wise mm-hmm. because I, it's not my main bathroom. Mainly, we wanted to be able to make sure that I could use it if necessary in, in an emergency or something like that. So, like, mm-hmm. our guest bathroom, I can... It's a full bathroom, so it's got a tub and a shower uh, and a toilet and a sink. And I can roll into that and close the door behind me. So I can use that bathroom if I need to, but there's no handlebars. We don't put a shower chair in there. Um, I don't can't roll under the sink or anything like that. But like if I need to use, you know, take a pee or something and somebody's in my bathroom, <laughs> I can do it if I need to. So again, not a whole lot like as far as like, who is this going to be able to work for Casey went into that other than can he get in and get the door shut if he would need to use it. And that's what it works for. And, I've and we've been here what two and a half years. Mm-hmm. I think in that two and a half years, I've used that bathroom maybe three, handful times. like three times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fun fact so, about the bathroom: Casey and I put that whole uh, tile on our by ourselves. Yeah, that was our first like big home project that the two of us just tackled without help from like my brother or any or any of our friends. We we went to Home Depot by ourselves. We picked out the flooring by ourselves and and cut it and laid it all mm-hmm. so and it's been staying there so i think yeah i'm impressed yeah. it's still on the ground so <laughs> after the yeah, that hallway you come into the master bedroom and so it's we have a queen size bed in this bedroom so it still uh, allows enough space for casey to maneuver and uh we also have a walk-in closet where he can go in and then we've designated a whole area that's like a his and hers and making things reachable, like especially things that he uses and wears more often, like in the day to day. The walk in closet is walk in. I can go in there and close the door behind me if I need to. It's not the easiest That's thing true. in the world, but we like. You don't really close it though. I don't. Yeah. Sometimes if I need to go in there to get dressed or something and she's still sleeping, I'll do that. But rarely do we need to go in there to close the door. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, and like Andrea said, we decided to stick with a queen size bed um, just because, like, we don't. I mean, I've slept in a king and. I'm small. Um, too small. We like to cuddle. <laughs> um, and I'll, and then, like, on top of that, then, that 
it gives me more space to be able to move around in the bedroom um, and have you know the necessary space to kind of do the day to day, mm-hmm. be able to help make the bed and things like that when I for sure when I try right. So so that's you know pretty straightforward when you walk in and see that now to the part of the house that has had most modifications it's the master bathroom so the door do you remember that original door used to open in the door was a swinging door that opened in and we knew that had to kind of go right away because there was no way i could get in any way that i tried if i went into that bathroom i couldn't get the door shut Mm -hmm. and like we eventually we would we wanted a door on it Mm -hmm. so we ended up putting like a sliding barn door um that hangs Mm -hmm. and that way i can go in and it the it's mounted on the outside of the bathroom Mm -hmm. so i can pull it in behind me and or pull the door closed behind me Mm -hmm. and there's no intrusion into the bathroom and it actually makes it pretty easy yep so Um, it was casey and his dad who actually assembled the barn door it was actually from what they tell me not very complicated we bought the barn door um hardware so to speak uh on amazon and then we bought the door with the right measurement at a local hardware store so casey and i painted that one once i was ready his dad came over they assembled it found the the things we needed i needed help with on that one was uh, like the it hangs or like the bracket so like obviously i can't be on a ladder so having someone able-bodied to be able to do that and honestly the hardest thing about that door was had nothing to do with modific it was the the uh, the studs in this home are erratic, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I don't think are to code sometimes. Um. <laughs> that was a nice, you know, just idea we wanted to share. Like, if you know, for a home, it was relatively inexpensive. If you inexpensive, yeah, inexpensive. Because, yeah. like, the other thing we considered was pocket doors. Pocket doors are expensive because you do have to usually tear a wall out in order mm-hmm. to in, to install them. So, like, a good if you can manage it or have the space to do it putting up a, a sliding barn door is, is a good idea but then the next <clears throat> yeah. thing was the sink was a Can sink. I talk about the sink yeah yeah so like we said this and have you we probably noticed this is the most modification we've done to the house was in this bathroom but honestly the bathroom is probably one of my besides the kitchen um <laughs> it's probably one of the more important places that i need to have Access. Access and accessibility, so mm-hmm. to speak, or ease of use, I guess, would be the best way to put it. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> what we did is, um, and again, none of this was done by, like, any kind of specialized ADA contractor or anything. Um, it was a mix between me and my family and our, our, friend. our friend who's the contractor. Like, taking um, the right measurements and asking Casey what was comfortable. Because essentially what we wanted, uh, to get to the point of it, is that we, he wanted a roll under sink yeah, a sink where i could roll up to so i can shave wash my face brush my teeth and not have to be like sideways because um you know at the old apartment and stuff when we can't we're not allowed to make these modifications um you i would have to always have to be kind of sideways like this to brush or to mm-hmm. shave or whatever so that was one of the big things i wanted for for my house was mm-hmm. to be able to roll in so <clears throat> you know sometimes if you do a whole floating sink, we like I thought I was going to spend thousands of dollars, but we were able to kind of we found um, a vanity top or like a a sink top mm-hmm. um, at IKEA on sale or like in the mm-hmm. in the it was, um, at that time yeah. at least one hundred and fifty yeah. or less. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we bought that and then probably another hundred bucks or so in the wood in the wood from home depot Mm -hmm. and we were able to put in essentially a floating sink Mm -hmm. um we painted it it looks great um Mm -hmm. like you can see the plumbing underneath but at the end of the day who cares that much Mm -hmm. um like there's not a lot of people touring my bathroom so (laughs) but like i can roll underneath it it Mm -hmm. works fine um we had to get a little creative with uh with some storage space because you give up that cabinet. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. But we have some... Stuff you know, hanging in and little f- drawers. Little drawers that we got yeah. from Target, I think. Yeah. Yep. So, um, and even with those underneath the thing, underneath the thing, mm-hmm. um, I can still roll under and have plenty of space uh, and it's worked out really well. Um, we, oh, and we did the, well, we didn't, but um, we had the floors replaced in there too. Yep. Um, by again by a combination of all these people like Casey's dad or a friend or his brother yeah. or us oh, and then the one last oh, yeah. modification we kind of two last modifications um, the sh- when, when we bought the house the shower had a it's a 
it's like an inset shower, so it's like the fiberglass, whatever, inset, so it's not tiled or anything. Um, and it had one handlebar in it, but admittedly the handlebar is made for somebody who's able or standing up in the shower because mm-hmm, it's at like, mm-hmm. for me, it's at like forehead level, which does me pretty much no good. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and when I would use it, it actually probably helped, like was flaring my shoulder up. So we did put one in at a lower, more usable height for me. Mm-hmm. That's That one's bolted into the wall. And then opposite that... I had this one that my brother gave me years ago that I actually used to use at the um, apartment. at the apartment uh-huh. too, mm-hmm. uh, and that one just suction cups to the wall. And I don't use that one; it's not definitely not for weight no. bearing. Like I can't like use that one to push up on, but I can use it for balance. So like if I am sitting in my shower chair, it, it it's in front of me, and I can lean on it to like bend over to like scrub my legs or. Mm-hmm. or you know, dry my feet off when I'm done. So it's not one that I can push up on to transfer into the shower, but it is one I use for balance and for stability. Mm-hmm. And between those two, uh, they work, pretty you know, good. pretty good. Like, is it ideal, like, my perfect bathroom? By no means, but, like, it works, you know, mm-hmm. and I don't get hurt and mm-hmm. I can transfer. Um, and it was cheap. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> <laughs> The last part of the house i guess that we wanted to mention is that we do have a really nice um patio uh with in the summer in the summer well summer or fall and then uh um, there's not two feet sliding. of snow on it <laughs> but with the sliding door uh the, mm-hmm. the thing though about it is that the sliding door is not wide enough not even with casey's chair which i would consider already pretty narrow mm-hmm. so he it's- hasn't ever since we've been living here been able to go in and out of that door he well has to that's go out. so when we first got it, it didn't open up enough at mm-hmm. all for me to use it. Like, I could mm-hmm. not get my chair through it. Um, what we ended up doing, or what, what I realized, is that it's got a handle on the inside and a handle on the outside. And the handle on the outside actually stopped it from opening as fully as it could. Mm-hmm. So I took that handle off. Because mm-hmm. n- nobody ever used it. Um, but anyway, so now I can get it open just enough that my chair fits through. But... But, like, not really Mm -hmm. that i like if i tried to actually push and not like i have to grab the the hand or the door frame and pull myself through because if i tried Mm -hmm. to push it would pinch my hands like that's how tight it is Mm because my chair is exactly 29 inches wide and the door is now exactly 29 inches wide right so i mean point being you don't really use it i don't also (laughs) the part of the the second issue Uh is that there is a just like there are front door there is a considerable drop um which makes navigating it and with also because it's a sliding screen door mm-hmm. the the threshold is weird because there's the track there's the actual threshold for the door there's the track for the slider and then there's the drop mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and the drop i think i measured because i was going to make a ramp is like seven and eight inches oh i didn't realize that. um so basically if and i don't know if we're going to decide to do this or not it's either going to need a um a big ramp this mm-hmm. summer or a deck because mm-hmm. like if you put a deck in at eight inches it would raise that up so that it could just be a straight shootout and that would be sufficient but we'll have to just kind of see some of the things we're waiting on to kind of make decisions about and it's but. not like he can't use it what i was going to say before is that yes he doesn't use that one but he goes out outside uh using the garage mm-hmm. and then he can go around the house to the front and just a little bit of gra- grass uh to tr- to get to the actual um patio cemented yeah. area. yeah i don't want to say that i don't use the patio we use it a lot during yeah. the summer and and fall and spring anytime there's not snow on it yeah um i have my grill out there we grill mm-hmm. quite a bit during the summer we have um lawn we put chairs. some lawn chairs up and some patio lights so we get to sit out there when it's nice and just um, enjoy yeah so yeah, it works out great it's just i can't use the patio doors so to speak mm-hmm. so Love yeah we modify. mentioned like what we would modify if we had no if money was no object or if you know and and a lot of these things aren't necessarily out of reach it's just sometimes you have to stagger them or or prioritize and then when you save up enough or you've made the decision on how you want to do something um but anyway so like the biggest one probably for for me personally it would be my kitchen Uh, and that's as like we had mentioned i i could do most of the cooking i enjoy cooking it's probably a hobby of mine so like Things I would think about doing is putting wall ovens in or a wall mm-hmm. oven um, because we have like a stove oven, uh, a stovetop oven combination, like a normal kind of thing. Mm-hmm. 
And right now, getting into that oven, it can be tough because it's it's lower for me, so I have to like reach down and balance issues and reaching in, you can end up burning yourself. So like an ideal situation, I would put a wall oven in that would be probably um, a little lower than chest level when I open the door so that I can reach. reach. I mean, if I was made out of millions of dollars, I, <laughs> I saw this oven at like, it probably was like a Home Depot or Lowe's or something, but they're French doors and it opens like this. <laughs> And then you can just, but it was like $5,000. Oh, so, yeah. But like if, yeah, ideally, like I would love to have a French door oven. Yep, yep. Um, but no, like a wall oven that comes mm-hmm. down like this. Because that's the other thing too is you can get ones that have, I think sometimes they even say like ADA compliant or whatever. Oh, really? And what it is 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 the fold-down door is a little bit more reinforced. And then like if you would need to pick something up and then set it on the door, it will hold the casserole or yep, whatever. Yep, yep. Um, and then yeah. if I was able to do a wall oven, then I could get rid of my oven oven and then I would do like a, like a countertop stove with a cutaway just like my bathroom so I could roll underneath it and I wouldn't have to cook sideways anymore. Yeah. I could cook right in front of me. Yeah. Um, and then the other big thing in our kitchen would just be, well, probably a roll under sink. Yep, yep. Um, oh, yeah. And then if we had the space, which I'm not sure we would do, could do in this kitchen, but if I had the space someday, some sort of prep area that had a lower enough counter where I could not be up here like doing chopping and that mm, kind of stuff mm-hmm. or mixing but mm-hmm. um you know one kind of cool thing is every once in a while you see especially sometimes in these like mid 90s homes where they had at one point like the idea of a of a desk that was built into the kitchen mm-hmm. sometimes those are low enough where you could repurpose that as more of a mm-hmm. kitchen prep area mm-hmm. as opposed to a desk that's true you know so and then the other things that not really um, out of the the out, out of reach. Yeah, yeah just it's more just things, things we just that, haven't yeah. gotten to yet. <laughs> it's, it's like the front door ramp. We could get that a size one. Maybe get a metal one. Uh, then the screen door, like Casey mentioned, it opens out but shuts in. We probably get rid of that to be honest. Yeah, um, I don't think there would be a reason we would need to keep it. Mm-hmm. It's also it's one of those ones that's like mostly glass uh-huh. and that could cause issues if i'm trying to open it like the last thing i can think of is me trying to go out that door and then shattering it because yeah. i hit it with my chair uh, yeah that so good. just getting rid of the screen door probably altogether. yep um and then uh, we have mentioned you know there's part floor part carpet ideally because of the wheelchair and just mm-hmm. being able for him to push a little bit easier it would yeah. be making everything you know just updated mm-hmm. floors well then maybe not necessarily push easier because like carpet's not that hard for me but admitted, the chair is extremely hard on carpet, oh, that, and it's extremely yeah, hard yeah. to keep it mm-hmm. clean and looking nice. Mm-hmm. So, like getting rid of it just altogether, I would much rather get like those. What are those rugs that you can throw them in the washing machine? Oh, like the yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a brand, yeah, brand. Ruggables. <laughs> so. Ruggables, if you're watching us. <laughs> so no, like something like that yeah. where, um, you know, an area rug. Yeah, because uh-huh. like. The, the hardwood floor, or not hardwood, good lord, I'm not made out of money. Um, but like putting in um, vinyl flooring or whatever is a lot more durable. In my opinion, it's easier to clean mm-hmm. from the wheelchair and stuff like that because I can't take my shoes off to keep, you know, yep. and um, I'm certainly not like switching wheels out. Right. And, he, and honestly, even if I did decide to have like indoor wheels, the when you walk around and stuff, you pick your feet up, but like when I pivot, it no matter how clean my wheels are, it's digging something into yep, the carpet. Yeah, so it so. like tears the fibers a little bit. But yep. so that would be ideal, but not just something again, like Casey said, it takes it takes time, it takes some research, it takes the money, you know, uh, part that you have to save up for it and planning for it. But overall, I would say uh, we're very happy with this first home purchase. purchase you know, um, if we didn't mention it before, I don't know if we did. It's it's all in sl- on slab, single level, two bedroom, two bath, and just a little yeah, tad know. bit under twelve hundred square feet. Yep. So it's not so, the biggest place in the world, but how they arrange it works out really well for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, like she said, no basement. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, and and that's not out of the question for us in the future if mm-hmm. we ever wanted to. But then you like have to. Uh, price budget out like a lift and things like that yeah. that we just weren't ready to do as first time homeowners dealing with the first time homeowner experience yeah. plus you know just uh being young adults starting out you know purchasing with our own money mm-hmm. so. so but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions about the house our experience 
um, on how we did what we did or how we do what we do, <laughs> um, drop a comment down below. Or honestly, if you have any other ideas for us on how you've modified some stuff um, that we probably haven't thought about. Yeah, uh, or if you have... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, throw, throw it on the comments down below. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, or experiences you might have had uh, if you were... Uh, if you're a uh, um, wheelchair okay. user and buying a home or things like that um, we'd love to hear from you and we'd uh, love to have that conversation so uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button we got new content coming every once in a while um, we hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you guys on the next adapted adventures <laughs>